Jeez. Wow. That looked pretty bad. So as you can tell from the video you just saw, that end bell popped off really pretty easily. I used uh, some heat to heat up that, uh, that casting and housing and then a little penetrating oil that I was using over the course of a couple days soaking it in on, on the shaft and bearings and it worked really nicely. I was surprised at how easily it popped off with a little leverage. Uh, I appreciate the comments. That was really, I got emails, comments, um, Instagram messages um, that that was really that was really the common idea people gave me uh, our common recommendation was to to use heat and penetrating oil and it worked great so once we got it off I could kind of look in there and see what was going on and it was really simple and pretty obvious what, what was happening so as we moved on to the to the front bell we I was so scattered in my mind of what was going on and, and just trying to rush through it we dropped that whole casting off the front of the saw and what happened was is you know the whole thing holds together by the two in bells once you take one off, the other one's just free floating on there with the bolts. So I took those bolts off. In my mind, I was thinking, I gotta leverage this thing off just like the back one. Well, the minute I hammered in the crowbar, it just dropped to the ground. I was lucky the casting didn't break, nothing, no damage, the shaft was okay. Um, so we were lucky with that. Uh, and we actually, moving forward, kind of did the same thing as we pulled the shaft out of that front housing. We, we set it up on soft horses, and it, inside that housing, the bearings sit in there. And there's an end cap that holds the the main bearing into the housing and it's in there it's held securely with a set screw so ryan found that set screw we took it out we pulled out that end cap and then that that shaft is really just lightly press fit into um, that bearing and housing so once we flipped that housing over gravity kind of did did its job and the whole shaft just fell to the ground uh and it surprised us, and we were again, we were really lucky that we didn't do any, any damage. I mean, it, that's a pretty heavy duty shaft, and it wasn't a long fall, so uh, I wouldn't expect much to happen. It did tweak the, the threads a little bit. I had to file those so I could get the nut back on. Um, but besides that, I'm happy. I'm happy that we got them off and figured it out, and now I can get in there and pull those bearings out and put new bearings in. So, real quick, let's take a closer look at the shaft and the bearings and, and how all that came together. So, um, you guys can see that and, and, and see how all that works. So real fast, I want to walk you through this. If I can remember how this all went, you've got your two um, end caps or in, in, in bells. Um, you got bearings here and you got your shaft right here. Bearings go into this section, this little housing. Um, it's got a little step in here. So this bearing, this is the main bearing. It would slide in. It would sit inside there and then it gets held in place by this little, what I'm calling an end cap. Um, really, it helps hold the grease in and, and keeps, it, keeps everything greased, but it also holds the bearing in place. And there's a little set screw here that keeps it secured. It's got a little notch in it right there for that set screw to, to drop into. And once you get your bearings in there, the shaft just slides in. Um, it shoulders up on the bearing right here. And then the little end cap that I just talked about goes on the inside like that. Pretty simple process. When I reassemble it, I'll put all the bearings, new bearings into the housings. I'll put the housing on the front of the saw and then I'll slide the shaft in and then come back and slide the opposite housing over the, the shaft that's in place. Enjoy the 
All right, well, I think I've had about enough of that. Uh, this is not something I ever want to do again. But I think I've got it about as far as I can take it with the way I'm doing it. Uh, most of the paint is off. The casting, I'll just say Oliver's castings were really, really bad. This thing is super rough. Like, it's just... I was using a 24 grit sandpaper on the grinder and it's just, I mean, there's so many high spots because the casting's so rough. Uh, but I'm not even going to worry about that. I think it is what it is. That's what that's how it was made. I'm not going to change it. I'm, a lot of guys will fill it with Bondo and smooth them out. But I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to let it be what it is. Prime it. Shoot paint on it. Um, clean up all these areas that need that are kind of the machined parts that have tight fits. Get those nice and clean, oiled. Clean out the inside, all those dirt daubers out. And finally, I will be done taking rust and paint off of this machine, which I'm really freaking excited about. As you can tell, I'm covered in 90-year-old paint and rust. I have all this old paint and crap all over the shop, which is a pretty big bummer, but I'm going to work on that for the next 30, 45 minutes. Just clean this place up, leave the doors open, let it air out, and be done with this. So real quick, I wanted to uh, show you guys this little dish cabinet we built. I did not get a chance to film the process of this. It, it took us a while to make. We probably worked on this for like two or three weeks. Ryan's hanging out over here. He did a lot of the work. He did a really good job. Um, it was a bit of a learning learning project for Ryan because it's really one of the first big cabinets we've done since he's been here. So here are the drawers. A little rabbit, uh, what I call a rabbit here, and then we put dominoes in to strengthen that. So that should be pl plenty good. We built these little... Go ahead, dude. Uh, it's neat. You can see a lot of the bore holes. Yeah, there's, there's a ton of character in this wood. It's got wormholes all in it. It looks really cool. We got this little turn screw here that Ryan made that allows you to pull the drawer out. And that little notch lets it go past the stop that's inside the cabinet. So that's kind of how that works. Kind of a cool little detail. So all the panels on this cabinet are book matched, which is was easy to do since we sawed it out of beams. We had plenty of book match boards. You can see this one actually you can you can see the mortise. These are all timber frame beams, so they had the, the big mortise and tenons. And you can see we actually sawed right through one here. And it's kind of cool. You can see the chisel marks in there, which is a pretty sweet feature. What else? You wanna tell them about the panels you messed up? <laughs> I'm just they kidding. Look great. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> We had so these two are book match panels, but they're I think the it book should be flipped. Certainly. Yeah, that one should be flipped, but it still looks really good. Um, things like that happen. Looks great, no big deal. All all around the panels here, we we applied a, a bead detail that Ryan put in, and we did this using. We tried to cut these on the miter saw, and I have a really crappy old miter saw, and it was actually borderline dangerous. It wasn't working because it's just so small. So we set up a, a jig with the hand saw and cut them with a little dovetail saw and then use the shooting board to, to shoot the miters perfect. And they came out real nice. That's good. As usual, I really enjoy everyone tuning in uh, to this channel. Um, you guys have really uh, been very supportive of the bandsaw project and a lot of the work that goes on in here. So that really, really want, just want to say I appreciate that. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. I'm getting to see more progress done on the bandsaw and also getting to see 
the finished um, display cabinet, dish cabinet that we did. I wish I could have shot more footage of that getting built. And I'm working on integrating the camera into more of our daily shop work. I want to get Ryan more involved in the videos. He's a huge part of this business. Um, him and I build all the furniture in here, and he's really come a long way and is starting to build a handle jobs himself. So I think it, it would be awesome to get him more involved in the channel. I want to talk a little bit about the website and the catalog. So those of you that are new to the channel, you can go check out a, a video that I did uh, last year um, kind of showing uh, the, the whole idea behind the catalog and it was to help support a Kickstarter that we successfully funded. And I want everyone to know that catalog, <clears throat> I want everyone to know that catalog is still very much uh, a focus of ours, a big focus. The website is up, although it does still need work. I'm working on figuring out shipping logistics and freight right now. That's a, That's been a really big challenge, but we're getting through it. Um, we're adding product right now. We're working on a new dining room table called the Seguin table. Uh, it's kind of a farmhouse table and then a coffee table. These will both be added to um, the catalog hopefully this month. We also have small stuff. We have our hammer and chisel t-shirt. Um, you see me wearing this a lot. That's available on the website. We have small things like spoons and cutting boards. If you want to help support the channel and help support the business, um, I'd love for you guys to go uh, check out the website and order something cool. There's really a lot of cool content coming up, guys. I, I, I'm really excited. we got a 4x8 mesquite barn door that I'm going to be starting on soon. I'm going to film that process. And then a really sweet custom uh, ping pong table that is, made, is going to be made out of reclaimed wood. So that's going to be really interesting to build. The band stall, obviously we still got a lot of work to do on that, but I'm really, really excited, um, hopefully in the next couple months, to have it up and running. The next video, you should be seeing me uh, putting it all back together. Um, you're gonna get to see the paint color. I'm really excited about having it reassembled. Uh, it, honestly, a little nervous because I've got parts everywhere and I feel, feel like it's gonna be a bit of a challenge to put it back together, kind of like a puzzle, but I'm gonna figure it out and get it back together. Um, get a motor on it get some tires on the wheels get a blade and some guards uh some guides and that thing is ready to crank on and i can't wait for you guys to see it i can't wait to start using it so before i go i want to give you guys a real quick sneak peek of the color of the bandsaw i'm not going to really fill in the process of uh, painting it because it's kind of boring and not a lot of fun so the next time you see this saw it will be painted and that's the color it will be painted that's enough. That's all you get to see. You're going to have to stay tuned and check out the next video to see the complete saw painted and um, hopefully reassembled. Um, cross your fingers on that. So as usual, thanks guys for tuning in and I will see you guys next time. Boom. All right. <laughs> I don't know where I'm going to put it. I'm going to take down everything else. <laughs> I guess the American flag's got to come down now. <laughs> definitely get, gonna get some heat here on YouTube, but. Oh, nice to see you. Maybe the American flag should go in the middle. I think you should wait for the comments. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see what YouTube has to say. <laughs>